All right, so today I wanted to talk about the truth and the reality of our van life. Sometimes things aren't always as they seem because of YouTube and their editing and what I decide to record and what I don't decide to record. So what I basically do is I break it down and I just record the camping part, the finding the camping site and that part. We may go days where I don't record anything and we're actually doing schoolwork and work and you know, not having fun, <laughs> not out exploring constantly. It may look like we are driving all the time, that we are spending money like crazy. And really, I budget our money very tightly. Uh, I try to go through two, th two tanks of gas a month, fuel, because I'm diesel. Uh, I spend $100 to $150 a month on fuel. Uh, we don't tend to stay in one spot for the full two weeks. We need to go out and get supplies and come back. And we usually don't like to come back to the same spot. And uh, that's how we explore. When we get groceries is when we move. When we get water, when we get rid of our trash, that's when we move. And in a house, in a regular situation in a house, I would be going out to get the groceries and coming back. Same amount of fuel coming back and unloading it when I'm already in my home once I got the groceries. Now I just need to find my next camping spot. So I don't spend any more. I'm not driving anymore. Uh, we are able to find better quality food because we kind of plan our trips and grocery stores, <laughs> basically. It also may seem like Adele doesn't do schoolwork anytime, <laughs> like she is always on a weekend but she does, and I don't record during those days. She will do many hours of one subject at a time instead of doing, say, an hour and doing six different subjects throughout the whole day. She will do one subject and spend three hours on that subject and then another one. That's how she wanted to work, and I let her do that. But she has a set curriculum. She has so many hours that she has to do every year. And uh, we are doing above and beyond that. Because of being out here, we learn way more. And she's constantly free learning also. So I don't always push the curriculum, but uh, she does complete it and knows that she has to have those set hours on the recorded online study that she does. Just to give you an idea of some of the classes that she does, um, she does her basic uh, language arts, which is a seventh grade class. She is doing a Spanish class, which she is about third year Spanish. She's been self-teaching herself Spanish with an app for years. <laughs> um, so that's obviously a goal of hers to be fluent Spanish. So she takes a Spanish class. Uh, she's in seventh grade math, which is like an algebra. Uh, she is doing earth science is what we picked so we can integrate it with what we're doing right now. Uh, we're doing a U.S. history, which we're almost done. <laughs> She's done all of the art history classes that they offer and they were really, really, really spectacular. You really learned a lot. I was listening a lot of times and she's completed all the art history. She really liked the art history. Uh, as you know, she plays a musical instrument. She practices a couple different things. And uh, so that's like her music time. Her PE time was obviously when we go out and play and hike. And she takes a once a week class of a computers class, a coding class, health class, which her health class is very advanced. I would say more it's a college level. And uh, let me see if I forgot anything. Uh, I think that's it, but um, you know, she's a little bit more free learning on her own and she's a motivated child to do that. Uh, the class that she was in before I took her out of school was extremely small and she was waiting for all the other kids to catch up with her and she did that for a couple years. Uh, her reading didn't progress and uh, you know, that didn't make me very happy. She was ahead of everybody and then 
waited for kids to catch up. She didn't keep progressing. And that's when I made the decision that it was better for her to be homeschooled right now. And in the future for high school, we will try to look for a better school. You know, if she wants, she wants that social part for high school. So we will go back to high school when that time comes. But um, at the current place, uh, there was more kids behind. There wasn't anything for gifted kids or kids that were advanced. And uh, she wanted to move quicker than what they were doing and uh, was pretty bored. So uh, she also got a headache every day because of how noisy it was and stuff like that. And uh, um, she wasn't into sports. She's more into uh, like music and art and science. And uh, they didn't have a whole lot for that kind of stuff. It was mainly sports based. So. Back to the point was, Adele does lots of work. She's a year ahead of everybody. She's actually only 12, which is not technically a seventh grader. And uh, um, so she's already ahead of everybody in age-wise. So she's getting her work done out here. We're not just playing and spending money and driving around. We're actually doing quite a bit of work. All right, so another thing that you may or may not see with editing is, uh, you know, we're not constantly doing something. We're maybe relaxing or hanging out, getting work done. Uh, we're not always just go, go, go. We're, you know, being like a normal house. You would sit for some days and not go anywhere and, you know, maybe go out on the weekend. We don't really have a weekend. We can do it whenever. If the weather's great, then that's our weekend. She gets her work done early. You know, there's no said weekend, but it's not like we're just go, go, go and uh, constantly exploring, constantly doing stuff. Uh, there is a delay on my videos. They are not live. I wait till I'm gone from the area and a lot of times we don't have internet and I don't get a video uploaded and I get behind. So uh, there's that delay of where I'm at and what I'm doing and then I can also alter the time of, like I said, we've been here in Sedona for like three, four days. I've recorded almost nothing and I could choose never to record anything here and never even say I was here. And you wouldn't know, I would just move to the next next spot. So it's kind of however I want to portray it and I'm trying to just do like the off-grid camping and, and uh, the nomadic life. Uh, I also don't really do much personal stuff. I tried to keep it just camping and a lot of people ask, why are you out here by yourself? And and so forth but um, you know I was in a relationship for 14 years and I am on the way out of that relationship uh, part of all of this traveling you discover things and you your mind becomes clear and your mental health becomes uh, aligned and you realize things that are true and things that aren't true and I became I came upon a realization uh, spending time alone out here uh, without being bombarded by somebody else's negativity or thoughts that the person I was with was not who they said they were. Uh, it ended up being the biggest fabricated lie and misportray of a person's personality and scam that I've ever uh, been involved in. And it was very difficult uh, getting out of it. And I don't, you know, you may have noticed like I wasn't as happy and now, you know, maybe I'm more happy and I, you never know why. Uh, I, like I said, I try to keep the personal stuff out of there. And uh, so I was going through a process and I'm still going through that process of getting out of that relationship that was such a long part of my life and uh, you are able to work through it with a mind with nobody else you know at you you're able to think it through on your own and realize what is the best based on how you feel not what somebody is trying to make you feel like if you want to do this and somebody's in your life and they're saying uh, you know that's a bad idea you're in terrible health you're too old you shouldn't do that you know it's hard to make those decisions when somebody negatively is always saying that kind of stuff that's why this is wonderful this 
this is therapy. You can think with a clear head and figure out what is right for you. So out here, I was able to figure things out and realize it wasn't me that was doing the lying and the cheating as somebody was trying to make me feel like. So I am working through that. That's my personal stuff that you normally will never hear anything about. And uh, so I wouldn't really say I ran away from personal problems, but it definitely helped to sort it out with a level, clean head and mind and not be all influenced and so forth because that's what was happening <clears throat> my entire life and uh, I, you know, wasn't able to make decisions correctly anymore. Now, with the van life now, it has changed quite a bit for the last couple of years. When I first started off, yes, I was nervous and scared. I did the workaways for um, the first month or two so I had a place to camp that I felt safe and now I don't make as many plans I used to be very rigid like oh, we're gonna spend four days here and then we're gonna go to this next spot and now it's kind of like I don't have as many plans I have a large repertoire of places that I've been to so I feel comfortable like okay I remember that place I'll go back there you know we can go into town can go shopping and know that all right I'm gonna to go to that one place that was just a good overnight or we're just gonna stop there so it's a lot easier as you go through it but it's a different definitely a different feeling and uh, where you, you just don't have much of a plan or you're just kind of free floating around and trying to figure out what to do uh, rather than being stuck in a house where you have a plan and a set thing that you have to do every day so you do go through a transformation basically on how you feel about uh, just your everyday life and how you deal with it. All right, so another misconception is that I don't ever do any work, but when I go back to my home base, I do do work and I don't earn like an hourly wage or anything, but what I'm trying to work towards is earn like a chunk of money at a time instead of going to an hourly pay job. So I think about a year and a half ago, I bought a foreclosure house. I spent the time fixing it up and getting it where it was at least livable, rentable, and now I need to go back and completely finish it. There's, you know, like a deck outside that needs to be redone. This bathroom, this little, you know, the flooring needs to be redone. You know, a few more things to make it good. And if I could resell it, then there's my, my income so I'm going to eventually have to go back to the Midwest and do some work and hopefully make some money in the future and, and that's pretty much how I'll keep redoing it Pre reinvest that and fix another house and sell it I don't have to work really fast once a year would be great and that's all I need all right, that is some of the realities of our van life. So thanks for watching and make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already.